I'm Brooke Brown from Teach Outside the Box. Welcome to my classroom. I am busy prepping all the things for the Hour of Code that's coming up very soon. I have all kinds of different low prep lessons that I'm excited to share with you to help your students celebrate the power of coding. So if you're not familiar with the Hour of Code, it is a week in December every year where students all over the world are either trying coding for the first time or they are practicing coding with their friends. And now we can look at coding in an unplugged way. I'm gonna show you all different kinds of unplugged methods to try with your kids. Many kids are also going to be using coding apps and websites that I've been using with my kids for many years in my class. And you can also incorporate coding with robotics. So I'm gonna show you some easy challenges to try with your kids if you're interested in diving into robotics as well. So all the things I'm going to share with you today, I'm gonna to link in the product description below, all the different products, um, as well as some of the read alouds that I'm going to use to kick off the hour of code. So I hope you're excited to get started. So if you follow me, you know that I love kicking off lessons with a powerful read aloud that ties to the content that we're studying. And my favorite book to kick off the Hour of Code is called How to Code a Sandcastle by Josh Funk. This is a wonderful way to connect coding to the real world for our students, going through those basic functions of sequencing and conditions and loops and tying it to the steps to build a sandcastle. There's also a brand new book in this series that is really more appropriate for the older ones called How to Code a Roller Coaster. I would recommend this one for for second grade and up because it goes a little bit more into functions as an extension of more complex coding. Both wonderful ways to connect coding to the real world for our students and make them relevant and meaningful. One of my favorite ways to introduce coding to my students is through interactive hopscotch coding. This is a wonderful way to get your kids up and moving or for them to actually experience the different pieces of code as they build sequences on the floor together. So I have different pieces that they can put together to build their sequences of code. They can do this many, many times. This also works for a wonderful coding center that you can incorporate any time of year. So your students are going to build the sequence of code starting with the starting square. They're going to use the yellow squares. Those are going to be representative of the sequencing. So they can go up, they can go back, and they can go sideways with the sequencing arrows. We also have lots of different conditions. And in this case, our conditions are going to be actions that the students are going to do. So it might be stomping, it might be clapping, it might be spinning, something interactive. We call conditions if-thens. So when they get to that particular square, if they land on it, then they get to do that particular action. And then finally, they also have some looping spaces that they can add onto the back of the conditions. This is a common coding structure that is used all the time so that coders don't have to repeat the same sequences of code over and over. So instead of doing two claps, your students can put a repeat behind that clap. And when they stand on that particular condition, they know that they get to clap two times. So they finish their code, and then they finally add their stop square at the very end. And my son, Bo, is going to demonstrate how that works in the classroom. Here we go. Up. Good job. Oh. And then two times. There's a loop. Good job. Hands up. Stomp. And four claps. Good. And pat your knees. Good job. Keep going. You're almost done. Good job, Bo. You went all the way through the code. So this is a brand new edition of Hopscotch Coding. It is called Hopscotch Dance Party, and it is designed specifically for second graders, third graders, fourth graders, and fifth graders. So this is the perfect grown up big kid version of Hopscotch Coding. So instead of your kids doing a simple action when they get to those specific conditions, they are going to do a popular dance move, such as the floss and the dab and the running man and the whip. And so we also have added in some functions to step up that level of complexity for our big kids. This is my daughter, Ellie, and she's gonna show you hopscotch dance party. Ready? So there's her function that we created, freestyle and gangnam. Um, floss. floss with a loop two and times. Twist four times. And then um, flip and then a <laughs> and then um, dab. And that's Hopscotch Dance Party. You smile? <laughs> Sweet girl.
My third favorite way for my students to practice coding is through an unplugged coding partner activity. This one is actually called Gingerbread Coding and it is a free download in my TPT shop. I will put a link below for you to try that. So I start as early as kindergarten with this unplugged coding with my kids. It is very simple. Students partner up and partner one builds the code on the map and partner two writes the code to match. So if I were partner one, I would start with one of the gingerbread men and I would choose where I would like to end my map somewhere on the coding map. And now I'm going to build a path all the way from the start of my gingerbread man to the gingerbread house. These pieces, candy pieces right here, are going to be my path pieces. The colors do not matter. They can use any colors that they'd like. So we have our sequencing getting from the gingerbread man to the gingerbread house. And the next step, we are going to start adding in some conditions. And one of those conditions is going to be a treat. So you are going to choose two treats to add to your gingerbread map. You can put them anywhere along the path. You're also going to add one enemy to the path. And we know some of the famous enemies from the gingerbread man are a cow and a fox. So I'm going to choose to add the fox right here. Okay, so now your students are ready to draw and write a block code that is going to match this particular map. And they're going to be using these coding symbols as they are working through the sequence of code. So the arrows mean to move right, left, up, or down. If they arrive on a square with a treat, they are going to draw a smiley face. That is the code that is going to match eat a treat. And then when they reach an enemy, they're going to draw a frowny face that is going to allow their gingerbread man to jump over that enemy. So if I was going to draw the code to match this particular map, I start here in the first direction, I'm going to go up. So the students would draw an upward arrow on the first sequence of code. Then they're going to go up again, but when they arrive up on this particular square, they get to eat a treat. So they're going to draw a smiley face on that particular square. They're going to go up again, and then up again to the right and so on. So partner one can kind of check partner two's work as, as he is writing the sequence of code to match the map. After you are finished, you're going to erase the code, clear the map, and then the partners are going to switch places. I do have these unplugged coding activities for every single month in my TPT shop as well as a discounted bundle if you're interested in purchasing them for the entire year. After I've exposed my students to some different forms of unplugged coding, then they are then ready to jump in with some coding apps and websites. And this is the fourth lesson that I share with them during my weekly hour of code. So my personal favorite coding app is Codable. It is appropriate for all grade levels. It is a wonderful way to introduce even the youngest students in pre-K and kindergarten to coding. Box Island is also a huge favorite. Code.org is wonderful for second grade specifically and up. They have some wonderful lessons on there. Dance Party is one of my my favorites that you can do with your kids. Scratch Junior, Bebot, and Swift Playgrounds are also favorites among my students. Okay, so we're going to touch Sequence Sector. So this is the app Codable that my students and I love, and this is Bo. He is five, and he's going to start with some sequencing. So we're going to drag and drop the arrows to get the fuzzball through the maze, okay? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. So which direction is he going to go first? Is he going to go right, up, down or left to get to here. It's gonna go right. Can you touch that arrow and pull it up here? Right there. This, watch mama. See? You're gonna go all the way here. See? He's gonna go to the right. Now which way is he gonna go? This app is wonderful for coaching our little I, ones. I will do. He's gonna go down. Good. And then what direction is he gonna go? This is called sequencing, Bo. Can you say sequencing? Sequencing. Okay. Press the play button. High five. Good job. You did it. And now we get to advance to the next lesson. Okay. Oh, this one's hard. All right. It's like... Want to try it? Here. Right. Good. Wait, he's gonna he's gonna be right here, so he's gonna go right again. 
There you go, good. So now he's right here. One more. That was a tricky one. Press play to see if he goes through the maze. Right, up, right, up, right. And you've got all three stars. Good job. My final way that I love to incorporate coding with my students is through the use of robotics. And the wonderful thing about robotics is that they are interactive, they are fun, they are engaging, they are something that my kids constantly go to during Makerspace, and you can do all different levels and complexities of coding with your students. So I have several in front of me today, but I also have several blog posts that I have written specifically about robotics and coding that you can visit. I will put the links to those in the description below. It's going to compare and contrast all the pros and cons of all the different robots that I've tried with my students. Some are more appropriate for the lower grades, some are more appropriate for the upper grades, but these that I have in front of me are favorites that I go back to time and time again. So the first robot I ever used with my students and really kind of got my feet wet with robotics is the Bebot. Very simple sequencing that I tried with kindergarten and first grade. This is a great robot if you have no experience with robots whatsoever and you just kind of want to try them out. Very simple programming and they are very easy to incorporate all across your curriculum. This one is a brand new one that just came out by um, Learning Resources. It is called Coding Critters. They have three different ones. This is perfect for the little bitties, pre-K and kindergarten. Very cute, very fun. Same sort of sequencing functions that you're going to find on the Bebot. Botly is also a wonderful one to introduce with pre-K and kindergarten. This one you can program to follow paths of code that are built with a puzzle on the floor, or you can just program them similar to the way that you can program Bebots. Dash is great for all grade levels because it has several different apps that you can make as complex or as simple as you'd like, depending on the age of your students. We have three dashes in our class and we probably use these more than any other type of robot since I teach kindergarten first and second grade. I'll show you a little bit more about what Dash can do in just a little while, but this is by far one of my favorites. I'm also a huge fan of the entire Sphero line. We have Sphero Minis as well as Sphero Bolts. Guys, there are so many different math skills that you can incorporate as you are teaching coding to your students. The program that you're going to be using with Sphero is a little bit more complex, which is why I focus mostly on Sphero with my second graders. So regardless of which robot you are choosing to use with your class, I have developed several different packs of beginning materials that you can use called Bot Basics. And you can use these materials to introduce any type of robot to your students with different challenges that you're going to set up around your classroom. These are appropriate to use all year long, not only during the hour of code. I have lower grades and upper grade versions, so you have lots of different activities to choose from. So I'm going to show you a few different examples of Bot Basics in action. So this Bot Basics lesson is called TAG. It is one of the very first ones that I like to try with my students. You can use any type of robot for this activity and all they need to do is place a glue stick away from them on the floor. They're going to program their robot to move forward, touch the glue stick and move back to you. So for this case with the Bebot, we are going to move forward three steps and then they're going to move backwards three steps. And then we press go. Then they can challenge themselves, they can change the distance of the glue stick and program their robot again. This next challenge is called Around the Tree. You can also do this with any robot. Your students are going to build a tree out of building bricks, linking cubes, anything you happen to have in your classroom. And then they're going to program their robot to move forward, go all the way around the tree, and move back to you. So in this case, I'm going to be working with the Dash robot. This is the Blockly app that I'm working with today. So I programmed him to move forward, turn right 90 degrees, forward, turn right 90 degrees again, and then forward to come back to me. This next Bot Basics challenge is called Cup Crash. Again, you can use this with any robot. Your kids are going to build a tower out of mini cups and then program their robot to crash into the cups and knock as many down as they can. In this case, I am working with Sphero Bolt, but you can do this with any type of Sphero robot, and I'm in the Sphero EDU app. So I programmed my Sphero to roll at zero degrees. Um, 92 is gonna be my speed, and the duration is going to be for three seconds.
So I hope you're just as excited as I am for the Hour of Code to get here and to implement all of these fun coding activities in your class. Whether you are ready to try unplugged coding or plugged in coding with apps and websites or even some robotics, your students are going to be so engaged and it's going to be a wonderful December celebrating coding together. Happy Hour of Code.